The treatment of a radioactive tritium poses a major problem at the crippled Fukushima Daiichi nuclear plant. Removing the substance from wastewater has proven difficult. Now a panel of experts has begun to assess the risks and technological difficulties of handling tritium-tainted water. Nine experts on radioactive substances and other fields met at the industry ministry. They aim to reach a conclusion by the end of March. They agreed to identify the risks of keeping tritium-tainted water inside tanks or releasing it into the ocean. They say they will also look into the technical difficulties of developing technologies to remove tritium from water. They say studying the different options will help determine what action is best. The ministry expects the tainted water at the plant will likely accumulate to about 800,000 tons in the future. A team from the International Atomic Energy Agency visited the plant earlier this month. The experts suggested that Japan consider releasing the water into the ocean after it's diluted to below government set standards. The operator of the Fukushima Daiichi power plant aims to restart its nuclear reactors to turn around its business. Tokyo Electric Power Company has presented a 10-year restructuring plan and gained approval from a state-backed fund for nuclear crisis compensation. The Nuclear Damage Liability Facilitation Fund held a meeting of its steering committee on Wednesday to discuss the plan. The plan outlines the restarting next year of two of the seven idle reactors at the Kashiwazaki Kariwa nuclear power plant in Niigata Prefecture. The two reactors are now undergoing safety screenings by the government. TEPCO plans to restart two more reactors at the same plant in 2015, but it says the remaining three reactors will not be restarted until 2016 or even possibly until 2023 as preparations are needed to meet new government safety standards. The utility says it aims to make between one and two billion dollars per year in profit by resuming the idle reactors to reduce fuel costs for thermal plants. If the profits are realized, the utility plans to gradually reduce electricity charges by up to about $10 billion annually over the next 10 years. The Fukushima Daiichi nuclear accident in March 2011 is still far from over. The plan also includes an increase in government funding for interest-free loans to the utility to pay for ongoing compensation and decontamination work. We hope TEPCO is reborn and fulfills its responsibility as a company. The government will increase its assistance, so we will carry out our responsibilities further. The utility and the fund will apply to the government for approval of the plan on Friday. Countries around the world are submitting reports to the United Nations on how they will meet their targets for the reduction of greenhouse gas emissions. Japan plans to turn in a set of initiatives on Friday. Japanese officials are targeting an emissions cut of 3.8 percent by 2020 compared with 2005 levels. Government sources say the new measures aim to have 5.3 million fuel cell units installed in homes by 2030. These would promote energy efficient housing. Japan also plans to raise the percentage of eco-friendly cars purchased from 50 to 70 out of all new vehicle sales by 2030. 
The initiative state Japan will work to introduce as widely as possible solar, wind and other renewable sources of energy over the next three years, but they failed to set any numerical targets. The report also says the country will utilize nuclear reactors once their safety is established. And leaders in Tokyo, too, are preparing to sign off on a plan that will commit the country once again to nuclear power. The move marks a major turnaround from a promise by their predecessors to create a nuclear-free society. NHK World's Mayu Yoshida has the story. Officials at the industry ministry review the basic energy plan every three years. The document sets the guideline for Japan's mid- to long-term energy policy. The officials published a draft of the latest plan earlier this month. The government is likely to finalize it in January. The draft describes oil and liquefied natural gas as important power sources, but it also says nuclear power would belong to a fundamental category of energy known as the baseload. The plan says renewable energy is promising, but not cost-efficient. It pledges to decrease Japan's reliance on nuclear power, but it also praises the energy source for being cost-efficient, stable, and helping to cut carbon emissions. The draft advocates restarting nuclear reactors as long as they meet strict safety standards. <laughs> The government will restart reactors after making sure they're safe. The basic energy plan reflects Prime Minister Shinzo Abe's resolve to ditch a promise made by the previous administration. That government, led by the Democratic Party of Japan, vowed to end the country's reliance on nuclear power by the 2030s. It made the decision in the wake of the 2011 disaster at the Fukushima Daiichi nuclear power plant. Meltdowns at three reactors prompted a national debate about energy in resource-poor Japan. All 50 reactors across the country went offline. The government at the time said it will limit the lifespan of all nuclear reactors to 40 years. And it said Japan would have no new plants. Business leaders opposed the decision. They said Japan's economy will struggle without a cheap and stable energy source. We need to ensure the safety of reactors as quickly as possible and accelerate the return to nuclear power. Nuclear power plants supplied Japan with about a third of its energy needs before the Fukushima accident. Since then, their contribution has fallen dramatically. Now, the energy sector depends largely on thermal power. Oil and gas imports have soared. The weakening yen has pushed Japan's trade deficit to a record high. It's marked its longest losing streak of 17 months. Some firms are worried about rising electricity costs way on their bottom line. Takao Kashiwagi, who sat on the panel to draft the energy plan, says Japan needs nuclear power to be competitive. We'll have major problems without nuclear power. Businesses will have to leave the country. Industries will become hollowed out, jobs will dry up. So Japan should restart its nuclear plants under the new safety standards in order to stay strong and globally competitive. That's what our panel concluded. But the Japanese public remains wary. The latest NHK poll shows that nearly half of the respondents oppose restarting nuclear power plants. Some experts say the plan does not count the cost of using cutting-edge technology to improve safety at plants or of decommissioning them. The new plan is based on a one-sided estimate of the cost of nuclear energy. It only looks at fuel prices. It doesn't show if it's really economical to maintain nuclear power plants either. People can't make informed judgments with data like that. 
The political process of adopting this plan has been completely unsatisfactory. I don't think the plan is a true reflection of public opinion. Fukushima is still fresh in the minds of Japanese people. Problems at the plant are likely to have an impact for years to come. But Prime Minister Abe and his cabinet say they're taking all necessary precautions. They plan to press on and make nuclear energy a pillar of Japan's economic growth as it charts a path to energy recovery. The industry are optimistic about the future of shale gas. North America has huge reserves located deep underground. Advances in drilling technology have led to, led to a flurry of production and infrastructure development. We have, I should say, both a shale gas and a shale oil revolution. Now, the gas revolution in the United States has had far less impact on oil directly than it has on coal, uh, on nuclear, uh, and perhaps on renewables in the sense that it is such an attractive uh, approach now to, uh, to electricity production. And analysts say investment in the shale gas industry may reach $5 trillion by 2035. The city of Houston in the southern state of Texas has been at the center of the boom. Japanese business leaders are focusing their attention on the area, hoping to be a part of the success story. Hiroaki Osaki heads a subsidiary of Mitsubishi Heavy Industries. He's visiting Houston for a business meeting. He's noticed that the shale gas revolution has changed the city dramatically. There are more buildings and factories. This bridge wasn't here before either. Pipelines carry shale gas to Houston from all over the area. So officials from major oil and chemical firms are rushing to the area to build factories. The subsidiary of Mitsubishi Heavy Industries is one of them. The company is based in Hiroshima, western Japan. It makes compressors or devices that pressurize gas. Their performance depends on a piece of equipment called an impeller. Rotating blades on the impeller spin 10,000 times a minute, heightening pressure on the gas inside. The end result is ethylene. That gas is used to make chemical fibers, auto parts, and panels for cell phones. A well-built compressor ensures stable production of ethylene. The company relies on highly qualified engineers to maintain its impellers. The device rotates at nearly the speed of sound. Engineers must make adjustments, milligrams at a time, to achieve smooth rotation. The company has been exporting the compressors mainly to the Middle East. It has a 50% share of the global market. Now executives have their sights set on the U.S. I want to highlight the technical capabilities of our workers and our factory. To help keep on top of negotiations, officials at Osaki's firm have set up a sales and marketing office in Houston. They've hired a former chief engineer of oil giant ExxonMobil to be in charge of the office. He has strong connections in the industry. Company officials have also announced plans to build a factory in the Houston area. That news has sparked interest from a large international energy firm based in South Africa. Officials at the company are planning to spend about $20 billion building a gas plant in the U.S. Osaki has been in negotiations with a vice president. The talks went well. Osaki's firm expects to do more than $500 million of business in the next 10 years. Our business will further expand, so it's important to secure a foothold in the U.S. right now. 
Researchers at the Japan External Trade Organization say many Japanese businesses are hoping to be a part of the shale gas industry. Houston's days as a boomtown seem far from over.